Here we go, video on geometric mean. Um, geometric mean is a little setup. It's basically a proportion where you have your two different extremes, but the mean's going to be the same. Okay? So to do this, what is the geometric mean of 3 and 12? What you would do is you would set up your 3 and 12 as your extremes, and then your mean, it's going to be the same number. Okay, so it's the geometric mean between 3 and 12. And then all you have to do is cross multiply. So you're going to get x squared is equal to 36. And that means x is going to be equal to 6. Okay, the geometric mean is going to be positive. Okay, the geometric mean um, is going to have to be a positive number. Uh, for 3 and 9, you basically would do the exact same thing. You would just do 3 over x is equal to x over 9. Cross multiply, you get x squared is equal to 27. So x is equal to 3 root 3 after you simplify your radical. Now this last one's just a little bit tricky. You're going to have your 3 over x is equal to x over x plus 6. When you cross multiply, you're going to have x squared is equal to 3x plus 18. Once you get it all over to the left, you're going to have x squared minus 3x minus 18. And then you're going to have to factor. And after you factor, you're going to find out that you have x is equal to 6 and a negative 3. But like I mentioned a little while ago, geometric mean must be positive. So your only answer for this example is 6. Okay, now that's just the basics of what a geometric mean is and how you solve for it. What we're going to do is we're going to throw it on to right triangles with an altitude. Now I'm going to show you a totally different way to do this than to memorize all of these different ratios. Okay, so basically what you have here is you have a right triangle. Okay, we'll just highlight him in red. And it's basically a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. That's why we have our a, b, and c. And then what happens is we're going to draw an altitude. This altitude makes two more right triangles, but it also splits this into x and y and z. Now, you can use any letter that you want. This is just to help you get used to the pattern. But what I do is I'm going to take this and make it a little bit simpler for you. Okay? First of all, you can just look. You can memorize all these. You can say that this is x, this is z, and this is y. You can memorize what all these patterns are. And then you can go ahead and you can say that this is 3 over x, which is equal to x over 12. Cross multiply, get x squared is equal to 36, which means x is equal to 6. Totally cool with that, if that's what you want to do. However, instead of memorizing all of this crazy stuff, there's one little thing we can do. We can take this c, which represents the length of that entire hypotenuse that has the altitude drawn to it, and we can put the c on the ends of the triangle. It's still going to represent the whole hypotenuse. And what that allows us to do is it allows us to draw three little mountains. And that is a way you can memorize the geometric mean for any one of these right triangles with an altitude. The top of the mountain is always the mean between the two numbers on the base. Okay? So... If we look, we have C over A, A over X. Well, here we go right here. We have X over A and A over C. As you know, proportions can be flipped. As long as they are in the same order, it'll work out just fine. Uh, Z is the geometric mean between X and Y. X over Z is equal to Z over Y. Here you go again. Um, so that's just an easier way to approach this. So if you were to look at this example, we go from the end to the leg to this piece to the altitude to this piece to the leg to the end which represents the entire thing and as you can see you have 3 x and 12 so from there you would do it the same way 3 over x is equal to x over 12 so I just wanted to provide options for you for this example right here um, you have a leg this would correspond to a which means you would have to use this x a a and c um, C is the entire thing, so you would have to find this entire thing of 9 by yourself anyway. But if you do it using the geometric mean we just talked about with the mountains, you would start out here, leg, piece, altitude, piece, 
leg, entire hypotenuse. We can see that 4 and 5 make up the entire hypotenuse of 9. And now here you go, 9 over x, x over 4. This is your mean. The top of the mountain is the mean. So we have our x and x for the mean, and then we have a 9 and a 4. Cross multiply again, we get x squared is equal to 36, which means x is equal to 6 again. That's just a coincidence. The answer is not always 6. All right? So for the last one, again, you can see right here, bang, bang. You do not have to draw all three mountains once you get used to this. If you like that method, if you don't like that method at all, feel free to memorize all these, and you'd be fine. So this one, 4 is the mean this time. It means not always x. So the mean goes in the mean spot. Your extremes are x and 8. 8x eight is equal to 16, so we have x is equal to 2. And that's it. That's pretty much all you're going to do over and over and over is just look for a pattern. So here are three more for you to try on your own. Go ahead and pause the video, give them a shot, and when you're ready, click play, and we'll show you how it's done. So let's see if you did this one correctly. Um, yeah, so what if it's drawn a little funky? It doesn't matter. This whole thing is x plus 3. That's the length of your entire hypotenuse. So this mountain is on the outside. 9 is going to be your mean. And then you have your little 3 and the entire length of that hypotenuse, which is x plus 3. Cross multiply, you get 3x plus 9 is equal to 81. And then you just have to subtract 9 from both sides. You get your 3x is equal to 72. So that means x is equal to 24. Okay? And the next one, what you should have done, is you're finding x, y, and z. So you are actually going to find all three of these mountains. Since this is 3 and 6, the entire length of your hypotenuse is going to be 9. And you have to set up three different ratios. So we have our mean on the, la on the end, which is going to be our x's. And we're going to have another one in the middle, which is going to be our y's. And then we have the last one on the end, which is going to be our z's. So we're going to have x with 9 and 3. Y is going to be with 3 and 6. And z is going to be with 6 and 9. And then from there, you just have to cross multiply for all of them. x squared is equal to 27. So x is equal to 3 root 3. Uh, y squared is equal to... 18, which means y is going to be equal to 3 root 2. And finally, on the end, we have z squared, which is equal to 54, which means z is equal to uh, 3 root 6. Okay? So you just had to solve the proportion three different times. For the last one, last thing you have to do is you have that whole thing, which is x plus 9. And then you've got this on the outside. So 6 is the mean. And that's in between x and an x plus 9. Cross multiply, you get x squared plus 9x is equal to 36. That's going to give you x squared plus 9x minus 36 is equal to 0. Factor that guy out. You're going to have your x plus 12 and an x minus 3 giving you x is equal to a negative 12 and a positive 3. But, of course, you can't have a side length of a negative number, so your only answer is x equals 3. All right, that's the geometric mean for you. Um, again, you can use the little mountain trick as long as you remember to put the hypotenuse on both ends of the figure. If you do not like the mountain and would rather just memorize those three different ratios or proportions and draw this little proportional diagram on the top of your paper whenever you take your quiz or test, that's fine as well. Whatever works best for you. This is Longo and I'm out. See you. Bye.